Today we are talking about the king of all drones, the DJI Agras T30. Don't go anywhere. Hey everybody, David here from Aerial Influence. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today, we're talking about the DJI Agras T30. That is the ginormous agricultural spraying drone from DJI. This thing is massive. It's got a ton of cool technology in it. So we're gonna go through the specs on this drone and then a little later, we'll talk about some of the hoops you're gonna have to jump through to be able to legally use this drone and spray with this drone. But let's get started with some of the positives of this drone. Here we go. Up first is that it has a 30 liter spray tank. Actually, DJI says it can cover 40 acres an hour. Now in the real world, you're gonna get differing results based on the weather, based on your operation, how quickly you guys can change batteries and refill the tank. But that 30 liter tank covers a lot more ground than you think it's gonna be able to, especially if you're spot spraying. If you're spot spraying, this thing is, you'll be able to, to cover a ton of ground with this thing. So that 30 liter tank is one of the major positives for the DJI Agras T30. Next up is that the T30 has a spherical radar system. So that means 360 degrees, this thing is going to be protecting you against obstacles. It's gonna help keep you at a certain level above the crop. So say you're wanting to be four feet above the crop canopy, uh, the drone is gonna keep you four feet above that crop canopy as it flies along. So even if there's a hill, the drone will actually stay, you know, four feet above that, above that crop. Um, even if it's going uphill or downhill. Now, some of the older versions of the DJI drones actually didn't do that. The drone would fly, and then as soon as it got to a hill and saw an obstacle, it would just stop where it was. Uh, so this really is a big thing. Now, like we always say, obstacle avoidance is like the airbag in your car or a seat belt. They're great to have, but you don't ever wanna use them. So it's way more important to fly safely. Don't get too cocky, and especially try to fly something like this uh, near anything that, that could be dangerous. Next up is that it's IP67 water resistant. So that means at the end of the day, you've got dust, you've got pesticide, whatever, all over your drone. You can just hose it down. You can literally take a hose and just start spraying this thing down. Uh, you know, obviously you're gonna wanna flush out your tank and all that stuff, uh, but really it's very, very easy to clean this thing up. Next up is that this drone has dual FPV cameras. What is an FPV camera? You might ask, that's first person view. Uh, so it's got one on the front, it's got one on the back. So it's nice because you can actually see where the drone is flying. So again, in some of the older drones, they would either have an FPV camera just on the front or no FPV camera at all, which definitely made it sort of difficult to fly this drone. So FPV cameras on the front and on the back, this is a big plus of the DJI Agras T30. Next up is that this drone is RTK enabled. What is RTK, you might ask? That is real-time kinematics. Uh, but for normal people like me and you, uh, it means GPS on steroids. If you have the RTK enabled on this, you've got a, a base station that you have to use with it, uh, but you're gonna get centimeter level accuracy. The RTK is basically what the self-driving tractors use to, to keep them on straight lines. So this technology really is awesome for drones because it's keeping the drone exactly where you need to keep it. So say you're spraying with one of these big drones, you need to make sure you're not gonna get any overdraft into your neighbor's yard. You can put it in a certain location, tell it to fly, and it is gonna stay right on that route. There's not gonna be a drift of five feet over to the left or right, which you can get uh, with some drones that are not RTK enabled. Next up is that this drone will go into orchard mode. What does orchard mode mean? I'm gonna show you a little bit of video of that, but basically the arms can be adjusted to kind of spray to the sides. So if you're flying through an apple orchard and you're trying to spray it, it's gonna go sort of to the sides instead of just going straight down like you would for crops. So this is another really cool feature. It's, it's an add-on kit that you have to use to basically transform this into orchard mode, uh, but really a, a great thing to have if spraying orchards is something you plan on doing. <music> 
Next up is you have 16 spray nozzles on this drone. You are getting a ton of coverage. You are gonna get penetration down into those crops and they're T-Jet nozzles, so you can easily change them out, basically get the, the nozzle that you wanna use on this drone and you can change them out. It's simple, it's easy, but that is another great benefit of the T-30. Next up is that this drone is relatively portable. You can fold it up. See here, I've got the arm latches there. You can fold these up. Both arms obviously fold in. I'll show you a little video of it fully uh, folded up, but you can see it's gonna be really easy to load it into the back of a pickup truck. Uh, and the drone really is not that heavy. I was able to unbox it, get it out of the box myself um, without anything in the tank. So it's really not that heavy, but this is all relatively speaking. It depends on who you are and what you're able to lift and what you're able to get around. But it really is for a drone this size, it is very, very portable. Up next, like its younger brother, the DJI Agras T10, the Agras T30 will fly automated routes. So you basically go in, to your remote, you touch four corners, uh, you make your field, you can adjust all of it, you can add more corners, that kind of thing. Basically, you're setting up the field that you want this drone to fly in. It's gonna set up its own route and it's gonna start flying. When it runs out of battery or it runs out of pesticide, it is gonna come back to you. You reload a battery, you fill up the tank and you send it right back to where it left off. It remembers where it left off and then continues flying. So the automation on this drone is key to it being a useful tool on the farm. Next up is quick charging time. Now DJI says that with this charging station, if you've got the correct cables, you can recharge a battery within 10 minutes. Now that's a big deal because these batteries only last about 12 minutes when you're flying with them. Doesn't sound like a lot of times, but they can cover a lot of acreage in that 12 minutes, but it's gonna be key to have somebody recharging those batteries continuously as you're flying so that your operation runs really, really smooth. Next up is that you can also put a hopper on this. That's right, this drone can also spread. So you can do overseeding of you know, grass seed if that's what you wanted to do. There are all sorts of ways to use the spreader on your farm or business. We actually crushed up some, some salt and, and put it in there to melt some ice on our driveway. So there are tons of ways you just gotta use your imagination and figure out the way you can use a hopper on a drone on your farm or in your business. So I promised I would tell you a little bit about some of the hurdles you'd have to jump through uh, to be able to fly this drone legally. And that's true, you have to have your FAA part 107. That's a test you have to take with the FAA, sort of like a driver's license test, but it's all about the airspace. You also need an exemption to FAA part 137. That's basically really for crop dusters. It says you have to wear a seat belt, et cetera. Obviously no one is writing this thing. So you have to get exemptions for that certification and that can take a long time and that involves a lot of paperwork, a lot of legal work, especially when you're talking about something over 55 pounds, which is exactly what the DJI T30 is. It's done gonna be way over 55 pounds, and that is a cutoff for the FAA. Anything over 55 pounds is a much harder thing to, to be able to get legal with uh, than anything under 55 pounds. You also have to get your pesticide license. Now, some of you may already have your pesticide license. If you're an aerial applicator, you obviously already have one, but there are lots of people that may already have their pesticide license. So if you don't have one, you can start with the state that you live in to find out the process to, to going ahead and getting your pesticide license, or you can hook up with somebody that already has as a pesticide license. You guys can work together and be of mutual benefit to one another. All right, that's it for today. Just wanted to give you some info on the king of all drones, the DJI Aggrass T30. This thing is a beast. It's little brother, the T10. Not as much of a beast, but also a very useful drone. We appreciate you stopping by. We hope you'll hit like and subscribe. That means a lot to us. It means a lot to me. We work really hard on putting these videos out. We hope you get some benefit from them. And if you do, hit like and subscribe uh, and any of the other things that you can touch down. There's like a bell and some other stuff. But we appreciate you stopping by and we'll see you next time.